Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. I always like to do a little shooting in, in every episode, but today we've had the full gamut of weather. It has rained, it has snowed, the wind has blown, it's been cold, and uh, so I thought today might make a, a good opportunity to go in the shop and, and talk about something we don't deal with a lot here, and that's rust removal. See, today's kind of a rare event where we're actually getting a little moisture right here on the edge of the desert. Uh, we don't get a whole lot. But today we're going to talk about spot rust removal. And I'll show you some guns that uh, maybe aren't appropriate for spot rust removal and then some that are. Um, and we're even going to show you some real high value collector guns that have a little rust on them and how to really carefully take that rust off without damaging the, the uh, finish on those guns. We're going to start off today with one that probably won't see a whole lot on this channel, a Ruger 1022. I know it might uh, destroy my image, but I've probably shot more rounds through a 1022 than any other gun I've ever owned. But this is a family member's. It has some spot rust on it, so I thought it'd be a good candidate. So let's take a couple shots with it, and, uh, and we're going to get in out of this wind and snow and, and uh, see if we can't take some rust off of it before we add a little more rust to it. Okay, so we've got a group of rifles here today with varying degrees of rust on them to use as examples to show you how we go about removing rust and, and trying to leave as much of the original finish behind as possible. Now this, this group, we've got uh, this 1022 that we were just out shooting that, that really doesn't have much in the way of collector value, although it's a, it's a pretty early model. Um, then we've got a couple of, of pretty high value collector guns here. So we're going to show you how to really handle those very, very carefully and, and try to not um, take away from their collector value at all as we remove some of the surface rust that's here. Now, a couple of these guns have had some issues in the past and have had some rust removed and done poorly. So we've got good examples of what not to do to remove some of the rust as well. And then a couple of these guns, we're not going to... Um, use this method to, to remove the rust on we'll, we'll show you that and, and why that is and what methods we will use in the future to, to remove the rust on those. So let's get right into it and uh, start with this 1022. Okay so we can see a pretty good spot of rust on this barrel right here on this this old 1022. Um, as we roll it up we can see there's a, a few little smaller spots that show up as well. Now we're going to talk about this 1895 here. This isn't just any 1895. This uh, happens to be a um, half octagon, half round barrel. And for any of the Winchester fans among you, you'll probably know that that's a, a very rare option in the 1895s. According to the, the great uh, book that uh, Kassab and Dunbar put out on 1895s, there were only 92 half octagon barrel 95s made. This one also has keep going keep going keep going it's a 30 inch barrel which is an extremely rare option as well so between the the combination of half round and 30 inch barrel there was only 82 30 inch um 1895s in the factory record this is a really rare one we can see that it had at some point in the past some rush issue rust issues on the receiver here and somebody took um probably steel wool dry and, and scrubbed it off and you can see that it it, it got the the rust off and you can see the rust had had taken the the finish off of it but again with that steel wool they've scratched all around where it was now if we look at the other side of this receiver this was a very high condition gun so it was it's kind of a shame that it got a heavy hand what we we always look for then if we if we see this kind of thing is what, if it was out here on the surface here, is there any under the wood? So we're going to pull this end off and see if there's anything under that. This uh, next one up is a Colt Lightning. And again, it's a really rare one. This one's a, a half octagon as well. For you Colt Lightning fans, you probably know that's a, a rare option. This one also has is a smooth bore. So it was probably a trick shooter gun. You can see this, this uh, extra ring added here for leverage. Um, was probably used for a, for a trick shooter, getting off the shots real fast and smooth bore. Um, but when we turn this one up now, we see that it had rust issues that really haven't been taken care of. They've just been 
handled enough that they've kind of wore wore off but we need to we need to take care of that and that's going to be a, a little uh tricky because this is a, a a real nice and conditioned gun other than the a few little rust areas so we want to make sure that we handle that where we're not going to affect the collector value okay so here's three guns that we won't be trying spot rust removal on let's take a little closer look at why so first up is this model 65 winchester in 3220 really a scarce gun but it's had the the finish bead blasted off of it and then it started to re-rust um, this really isn't a candidate for spot rust removal it really just needs to be taken down and to bare metal and refinished um, and we'll we'll do that in a, in a future episode we'll do a complete restoration on on this particular gun these next two they've got a spot of rust uh, kind of in this area <laughs> they're the whole guns are, are rusted up these were lost in a house fire in the 1940s and have just been put away in an old tack shed here uh, we'll use these for future episodes where we'll, we'll try uh maybe a vapor rust on this 1890 and uh electrolysis on this 1895 okay so here's the lineup today we're going to be using to try to get this rust off first off we just need any kind of good gun oil i i kind of prefer this uh clp break free but uh, any any gun oil will work just for a, a lubricant um we've got some croil here that's a, a the fantastic penetrating oil then we've got our our abrasives that we're going to use we can either choose between a four aught steel wool or i prefer a brass wool and make sure it's a, a solid brass wool not not a there is some out there on the market that that's actually steel wool with some brass over the top of course you can wear it through the brass and then the steel comes through this is a little coarser we want uh if we're going to use steel wool, we're going to use a real light touch and, and a 4 lot steel wool. I really like this stuff. This came from Homestead Parts. The only thing I don't like about it is you, you know, get a lot of the little flakes of that uh, brass off of there. It looks like glitter all over your workbench, but uh, it works really good. And then last but not least is a copper penny dated before 1982. Because in 1982, it's kind of the same thing as with the, the uh, coated steel wool. Um, they clad these pennies, uh, they're a, a zinc penny actually with just a thin layer of copper. And so you, you wear that copper layer off and you're just rubbing zinc all up and down on your gun. So really not the best uh, situation. If you know what a, a uh, galvanized pipe looks like, that's zinc coating on there. And we don't think we'd want to rub a galvanized pipe on our, on our firearms. So let's get started, see if we can't uh, get going on this 1022. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get some lubricant, some oil. In this case this CLP onto that rusty area there now I've heard some people say that oh you don't want to put oil on there because the the uh, fine particles will dissolve in the oil and you'll just be rubbing those particles all over and absolutely correct that we we don't want those particles just being rubbed all over so you know oil is cheap so when that oil starts to pick up those um, a lot of that rust and it does more so when you first start wipe it off and get some more oil on it well i don't i just personally don't think it's a good idea to to uh, have any kind of an abrasive on a a blued finish without some lubrication on it i think if you if you you're running it over dry those small particles pale in comparison to the um brass or steel wool that you're using now you'll notice that I'm, I'm going in a circular motion around the barrel it's probably not as important on this particular gun because it's not a collector but if you look at the polish marks on the on the firearm that you're working on you want to work in the direction that it was polished before it was blued okay in most barrels uh, modern barrels anyway it they've polished in a circular motion around the barrel they put it in a a barrel spinner and and polished it up that way but on the old barrels and we'll see this um, here shortly when we get it into that 1895 and that uh, Colt Lightning they were polished lengthwise so we would want to polish the other direction and and keep it keep all the polishing marks if any kind of marks show up we want them all going in the same direction it stands out terribly if you've got polishing marks going in in 90 degrees to one another 
Okay, so we're not really putting a lot of elbow grease into this right now. What we're doing, this is the first pass, and we're just taking the the high spots off and, and trying to get uh, the loosest stuff off of there to start with. And I, and I think this one's coming off pretty darn good. Yeah, we can see that we got a lot of that red rust off of there. We might just do one more um, pass with this CLP and uh, get as much as we can off nice and easy. And then, you know, we've got, got a big part of that coming off now. And when you can see, we're not affecting the, the bluing at all here. Now, in, in rust removal, a light touch and if you've got an expectation that you're going to get this rust off and you're, you're not going to have any damage to the bluing um, you need to lower your expectations i think more damage is done trying to remove rust thinking that you're going to remove all evidence that it was ever there um, it, it just it, it leads you to go way too far and use way too much elbow grease and end up with a great big spot in the white there you know, there's been a chemical reaction between that rust and the steel underneath that bluing, and rarely does the bluing not affected by it. So the the key is, is knowing when to stop. Now we're we've got this one about where we want it for for this pass, and then what we're going to do now that we've got the the a lot of the um, thickest of the layer off of there. Some of this other is going to be a little little more difficult now that we're down here towards the the uh, bluing. So we're going to let it soak in coil. This coil is just great stuff to loosen up rust. So this is the, this is the critical stuff. And now, occasionally, if you catch a spot of rust, you know, you put a gun away that's had a little damp spot on it, and you catch it within you know, a week or maybe even a couple of weeks, sometimes you can get that rust off and leave no evidence that it, it was ever there. I mean, probably microscopically you could if you looked at it under a microscope. But but uh, typically you're, you're going to see something that remains. This one's looking pretty darn good, and I, I'm pretty sure that this rust has been on this gun for a number of years so i really don't expect that we're going to get it completely cleaned off although some of these down here in the bottom um it, it may be pretty hard to see where that was when we get done and that's kind of the goal okay so let's take a look at this half octagon 1895 and this is one we talked about you know it had some rust in the past on the, in this side of the receiver um that was poorly removed but we kind of suspect because there was there was oxidation there rust there that maybe there's some underneath this fore end so let's take it off and, and have a look at it and see what we find there okay so again we're going to start off with some some lubrication some of this clp and of course this isn't going to be seen that doesn't mean that on, on a high value collector gun that we don't want to do it right but uh we don't maybe have to stress about it quite so bad because this is going to be underneath the the uh, fore end the nice thing is is uh, um the 3872 caliber designation is, is right underneath that and we're going to make that stand out a little bit better now you can see this one i'm sure this rust has been here maybe even a hundred years now as it comes off and we want to wipe some of that off because now we're getting those fine particles in there but as it comes off, and it came off really easy, but the the bluing is gone underneath it. So that's what we can expect um, anywhere on this gun, is that the bluing is probably going to be gone wherever that rust is. Now we've got that rust off of there. We really don't have to go any further on, on this particular spot. That that just took it right off. Um, so we, we look at that, and then we look at here on the, on the receiver where... The same kind of thing was done done poorly with some dry steel wool um, so we, we see that same situation where those rust spots took the bluing right off and you you cannot um, make that not happen i mean there's, there isn't a process where you where you can do that other than if you boiled the gun and and of course then you're you're messing with the finish and whenever you're messing with the finish on a collector gun 
you're you're taking away the value of it i mean collector guns are need to stay with their original finish they're only original once and when you start messing with them trying to make that match up boil it just right so that that matches up uh, it's it's never going to happen it's going to be obvious to the trained eye and uh, you've you've hurt the value of that gun so here we go and and we can we can of course on on shooter grade guns we can go back and cold blue some of that and it, it and depending on the situation we might even make it look pretty darn presentable um, but I'm I'm hesitant or I won't um, put cold blue on on a valuable gun like that this one okay so this time we're gonna because we've got a nice flat area we're gonna work on we're gonna use this copper penny and, and just show you this penny is is much softer than the steel or the bluing um, so it is not gonna harm the finish some of the best gunsmiths I know do this same thing um, in fact that's where I learned it from is from some of the top restoration gunsmiths in the business look at that that is spectacular now that didn't take the blue off with it it uh, it took that that little bit of rust that was right on the edge of that fore end and took it right off and again this gun was finished um, lengthwise the 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 um polishing so we of course want to want to keep going that way this is just fantastic look at that took that rust off there's another little spot of rust right down here we'll do the same thing get a little more um it's it's pretty hard to see that one there's not much there to that one but we're going to take it off same weight light touch remember now i can feel just a little bit of drag there so that's going over that that rust spot there and now that drag's going away so we're we're taking that rust off and see a little bit of of brown showing up in that oil there so we know we've got some rust in there let's take that rag there and there it's it's gone that's that's beautiful beautiful we don't have to go any further with this rifle we've we've done what we're going to do so we've taken these rust spots off here and and really don't even see barely can see where they were if you really look hard and then we took this rust spot off here unfortunately the the blue was was gone underneath it but uh it's gone now we don't have that active rust showing anymore okay now this old lightning is going to be a lot more of a challenge because everything we're going to do is going to be seen it's on the outside part of the gun it's not hidden under the wood like it was on that, that under that fore end of that 1895 this one's a, a little bit unusual in that it's it's mostly all just down here on the on the trigger guard and and the lower tang. Usually, if we're getting rust, it's it's out on the barrel somewhere or down the side of the receiver um, from poor storage and being up against something. And that's this isn't a place where you would typically think that there would be something up against it that had some moisture, drawn some moisture, and not let it get away. But we're going to go ahead and take the wood off because we don't want to be putting all this oil on and rubbing whatever it is, whether it's going to be brass or steel wool or a copper penny up and down on the wood as well. So we'll remove the wood, uh, get it turned upside down here and uh, start going to work on it. This is a, a much larger area of rust than what we worked on on that 1895 and of course on a, on a real collectible gun so we really want to do this right and take our time and go slow and easy and hopefully know when to stop okay so as you see this this rust is a little more substantial than it was on that 95 we're going to go through the same process we're going to get it good and oiled up and lubricated we've got two choices here we can use our our brass wool actually three we could use our steel wool but i just don't prefer steel wool we can actually even though this is rounded a little bit we can still use our, our copper penny you can see we're shining it up pretty good now um, but I kind of think where we're contoured like this we'll, we'll get a better uh, shot off of this brass wool most likely this is going to be a two-step process like uh, what we're doing with the 1022 we'll work off the, the top layer and I'll just concentrate on this tang for for demonstration purposes and uh, 
then we'll we'll get it wiped off and come soak it in coil for a while and then come back maybe even overnight and then come back and and finish it off now we can see that that's that's doing some good already sorry i'm kicking the camera around here but we've got a long way to go this is one where we we really can't expect that we're not going to have any evidence of that rust ever being there you know the the bluing is going to be affected here um, it's never going to have that bright shiny beautiful colt blue back again unless we were to take it all off and re-blue the whole gun which uh, of course we don't want to do either so we'll just keep very lightly working this down with this brass wool okay we're going to keep working here on this lower tang and trigger guard and lower part of the receiver here and uh, try to get that top layer off and then we'll get her wiped off and get some coil on it and let it soak for a while and and uh, we'll be back after a while for round two okay so we've let this Ruger 1022 with the, the spot rust on the barrel and this old Colt Lightning with a pretty extensive rust on the lower receiver or lower tang soak overnight. So let's see how they did. Okay, so with this 1022 we can see that um, we went from that big spot of, of red rust. We've just got some kind of discoloration showing through there. Let's see if that coil loosened up any of what's left there. And this coil has uh, some pretty good properties for, for lubrication too. So we can, we can go ahead and, and uh, use this brass wool over the top of it without worrying about um, scratching up the, the underlying bluing. It looks to me like maybe those um, pieces underneath pretty much went away. Let's get some, let's wipe that off and get some new brass wool. Oh boy, that's cleaned up really nicely. Like I say, there's there's some discoloration there, but uh, very little compared to that that spot of of uh, rust that was there before. Let's look underneath, see what it looks like. Oh, geez, you can't even. Uh, you can just. I don't know if the camera picks it up or not, but you can just barely see some discoloration where there was the those little spots of rust there. So I think we've done really well. Now I'm starting to see maybe the bluing's lightening up just a shade there. So I think we've gone as far as we want to go with this. We'll, we'll put a little bit more oil on it. Give kind of one one more shot here and then we're going to we're going to call that one good. Yep, that's that's really really done nicely. Of course we knew we weren't going to get it just absolutely a hundred percent um off of there but that's that's turned out where if you really if you weren't looking for it you wouldn't even see that there there's just some some minor discoloration and the the spots underneath are pretty much just gone you can't even see where those were just a little bit of dullness in the bluing right there so that's great let's go on and uh, see how this cold lightning turned out Okay, so here's this Colt Lightning. Of course, we know this one's more of a challenge. This is pretty extensive and pretty heavily rusted, but let's see how this how this coil might lift some of that. We can I can see that the the uh, coil is is starting to turn color, so we know we're we're getting some of that rust up and off of the surface. It's time to time to clean it off a little bit, so we're not rubbing that rust in okay so we are getting a lot of that rust off of there again we know that we're not gonna have uh that nice cold bluing left when we get done but we we certainly want to to get the uh that active rust taken care of let's get a little more oil on it and uh, work it over now i don't want to make it sound like this is just a a five minute fix and we'll just you know go go over a couple of times with some brass wool and some oil and it's going to be all fixed up this one it's going to take several um rounds of of wiping or scrubbing with this brass wool nice and lightly taking the oil off and going again and uh, 
So don't don't get in a big hurry. The the key is, remember I, I said before, is knowing how far is far enough. So we'll we'll uh, keep working on this and and come back and see how it's turn going to turn out. Okay, so we've gone just about as far as we want to go with this lower tang on this lightning. Now it's not um, factory finished, beautiful Colt blue, and it's never going to be again. But we've got that active rust taken care of. Um, we haven't taken any of, of, of the finish off, but we've removed most of that rust. If we go any further, we're going to start uh, uh, taking the patina off. We're going to get start getting down into bare metal, and we want to stay away from that. You can see right around the serial number where it's stamped, it's starting to lighten up. So that, that's kind of an indication we've gone as, as far as we want to go there. So the high spots, we're starting to get so show a little bit of, of lightning, and so... Um, the the finish is starting to come away from those high spots so it's it's time to to call this one good enough and again that's one of the keys to this whole thing is knowing when to stop and not go too far um really easy from here thinking wow that looks a lot better than it did um um more is better let's just keep going and, and pretty soon you've got bare metal all down the the lower tang and it, and it looks like heck and you've destroyed some of the collector value of the gun Okay, so that's my recipe for spot rust removal. Um, you know, we've, we've taken all that active red rust off of these guns. Um, we've improved them cosmetically, in some cases pretty dramatically, like this 1022, you know, that big heavy spot of, of rust on there is pretty much just a, a slight little discoloration. This 95 cleaned up really nice, and we've got this lower tang looking a whole lot better than that rust removed on this, this lightning. Now, handling these two really awesome old uh, half octagon rifles has me really hankering to take them out and shoot them so i'm gonna have to figure out how to load up some shot cartridges for this uh smoothbore 3840 if my, my uh lovely bride will let me take it out and shoot it and this 1895 i found that i've only got a few cartridges at 3872 so i think this next week we're going to be busy uh maybe slugging the bore on this thing and and uh maybe maybe we'll make up a a few bullets, um, get the old casting pot warmed up and, and load some up and take it out and shoot it. So stick around, that ought to be pretty fun. Until then, happy trails from the Cinnabar.